Hi, my name is Ariel. Thanks for joining us today at the Wild Rose Country Store. I'm excited to teach you our milk paint basics today. Hi, my name is Ariel. Thanks for joining us today at the Wild Rose Country Store. I've been using milk paint for about five years now and I fell in love with it um, since the first time that I used it. It's just unlike any other paint on the market and I'm excited to show you today why it's different and all the different techniques that you can use. Um, it's pretty simple and fun. So grab a paintbrush and a cup of coffee and let's get started. So if you bought the kit with the um, workshop here, you will get five blocks. And what's different about these blocks of wood is that they have a smooth side and then some have a rougher side um, to help with getting different looks. Um, and then you will pick four different um, testers, um, four different colors that you'll be using today to get the different looks. And then three, or actually four different finishes. There's hemp oil, white wax, clear furniture wax, antiquing wax, and a brush, and a stir stick. Um, there's a few extra things you can grab around your house, um, just like a little tablespoon. Um, if you have a little mini whisk, those are really great for mixing. Um, and then these shot cloths are also really good as well. So as you can see, milk paint comes as a powder. You get to mix it. So in this container here, I have water. Um, and we're gonna just mix the water with the milk paint. But what milk paint is, is it's natural ingredients, which is super nice. So there's no harmful chemicals. Um, and it's made with five simple ingredients. Um, it's chalk, clay, limestone, casing, which is um, the milk protein where it gets its name from, and then natural pigments. So it's super safe to use in your home and you won't get any harsh chemicals or anything. Um, and milk paint when um, mixed with just water, it'll absorb into wood like a stain and it won't chip or flake or peel off, um, which is super durable and really nice. You get a really nice finish. Um, if you want to paint anything non-porous, then you can paint even glass or metal or anything non-porous when you use bonding agent with milk paint um, or the ultra grip bonding agent. Um, you just mix equal parts um, with the bonding agent into your pre-mixed milk paint and then you'll be able to paint pretty much any surface, which is super nice. But today we won't be using the bonding agent, we'll just be using milk paint on the raw wood. So we're just gonna mix up all the colors all at once. So I have four colors that I'm using today. Um, I have this one sitting here just to show you the, I'm not using this one today, but I did use it on one of the other samples. Um, so you can see um, it's nice blue, but the powder looks yellow. So you might open the bag of milk paints and think like, oh, that's the wrong color. But as you mix it, you'll see the color come to life and it will be, um, and even as it sits, the color will, deepen and, and uh, get more rich. And I'll explain how to mix the paint. It's pretty simple. Um, I always add the water first, so we're gonna do two scoops of water. And this is always a starting point, so you always mix milk paint with equal parts water and equal parts powder, but then you kinda just see um, what the consistency is and then add more powder or more water, depending, but I'll show you here. So I'll do two scoops of powder. And then you can stir with um, a stir stick or the whisk. And it'll mix up nicely. It's really fun to see all the, the pigments mix. And, um, and then the consistency that we're looking for is a cream-like consistency. 
So I usually let it sit for about um, 10 minutes just to let it all the pigments dissolve. Um, especially with some colors, I find some colors just take a little longer to dissolve. And if you don't let the pigments dissolve and you go ahead and paint like this, you're going to see um, like streaks of different color come through. So it'll be like really streaky. Um, so if you want a nice solid color, then just give it a good stir for about a minute and then you'll let, set it aside and let it sit for um, about 10 minutes and then we'll check the consistency. You can kind of already tell a little bit if you need a little bit more. Um, yeah, I usually tip the cup to see um, if it's like a cream and it does thicken up a little bit as it sits as well, I find. So I think that looks pretty good, but I might add just a tiny little bit more. But yeah, you don't want it too thick. It won't be as thick as like modern paints on the market. So so I'm going to let that one sit and I'll just start mixing up the next color while we're waiting here. Okay, so for the first board, um, this board will only take one color, but what I recommend doing is um, writing on the back of your board, um, like board one, wet sand, um, and then the color you use if you want, and then the technique, like we'll be using hemp oil. So just grab a Sharpie and you can write on the back so you don't forget what you did, because I always think I won't, but I do. So um, we're gonna do a hemp resist, um, so you get a nice, super soft finish. To get your piece ready, um, if it's just raw wood, I just give it a light sand. Um, just get rid of all the little like fuzzy pieces. But depending on the look that you want to get, you don't have to sand it too much or anything. Um, So now all the paint is set, about 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna show you the consistency here of this one. I'll show you each one as I use it and we'll check it as we go. I'll just scrape the edges good. If you don't scrape the edges, um, you'll make, your brush might pick up the pigments and then you'll still get that streaky look. Um, but yeah, so you can see as you pour it, it kind of, um, a little bit and it's like a cream like consistency okay so I think it's ready to go and I'm going to use it to paint this first board here today I'm going to use um, a dark navy blue yeah so you can see how good it covers on raw wood Usually if you're painting a piece that um, you're using bonding agent and it's non-porous, then it will take more coats likely. Um, it depends on the color you use though and, um, and the piece that you're painting. But I like to paint the edges too because you can make these boards into other things if you want. Some people make them into hook boards, like little mini ones, or, um, or you could stencil something on it, or, or just use it as just your practice. So. The nice thing about milk paint too is that you get minimal brush strokes, and um, yeah, if your milk paint wasn't mixed good enough, it will be like lumpy and pretty chunky. Um, if you have that happen, um, yeah, maybe wait a little bit more and um, give your milk paint another good stir. Um, but you can also sand in between coats to get rid of that 
So it's really easy, easy workable um, finish. Yeah, so we'll let that one dry and then I'll show you the finishing technique for that one. Um, so the dry time is really, um, really quick. It's 20 to 30 minutes. It'll cure within 30 minutes without any bonding agent. So with the bonding agent, um, it will dry within two to four hours. So this board, we're going to do two colors on it. So I'm going to paint the base first, and then we'll add the other color um, after it dries. Oh, and if you're doing, um, if you're painting a bigger piece, then you'll want to um, keep stirring as you go, because the pigments will keep settling as you're going. This board I'm painting on the rough side. And this one we're going to paint a color on top. So I'll try to paint it quick so it can dry. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and paint the next one. And again, whoops, got paint on my hand. I'm a really messy painter. So, um, we're going to paint the next color that you have. It's also going to be a base color. So think about what color you want underneath. And then we'll put a top color on top of that. I'm painting the rough side here. So. There, I covered up my happy little accent. <laughs> Pretty nice and easy. So again, just painting on the rough side. And again on the rough side of the board. So now we've let the paint dry. Um, if you want to speed up the dry time, you can actually use a hair dryer. Um, just make sure it's on the cold um, setting because if you use heat, it'll just make it chip and that's not the look that we're going for right now. 
So just keep it on the cold um, and that'll speed up the dry time if you're in a rush. Um, but so for this board, um, yeah, I painted it in artesano and I'm going to finish it with hemp oil. So I have a little bit of hemp oil in here and um, it's gonna give it a really cool distressed look. This is probably one of the easiest um, looks that you can achieve with milk paints and just one of the nicest, my, like my favorite finishes that you can get. So you'll see that with the hemp oil, it deepens the color a lot. And with any of the, any of the colors that you use and any of the finishes, milk paint will look more um, like matte and chalky until you finish it. And then depending on what finish you use, it will bring the finish to life. And maybe I'll put a little more on. And so just brush um, a nice even layer of hemp oil all over your board. And then this is going to be a very fun, um, easy technique for distressing. So I'm just using the 220 sandpaper and then I just give it a nice sand. And you can apply as much pressure as you want to kind of get the look that you want. But you can see where it's kind of distressing. Already. And yeah, you can kind of have it just distress as much as you want wherever you want to see the wood or bottom layer coming through. Sand a little around, more around the edges if you like, or. Okay, and then when you're done and happy with it, then you just grab a lint-free cloth and just wipe away the excess. Yeah, this is a pretty, very pretty color. Nice deep blue, it's almost black, which is nice. There, and I can give you that nice distressed look without a lot of muscle work. And that's that one. Okay, so we're gonna take your second board and we're gonna do um, well, for this board, you're going to need um, your wax puck um, and then the top color that you want to go on top of this color. Um, so what I did, yeah, with other board too, I just wrote on the back um, the color I used on the base, the color I'm going to use on the top, and then the type of technique that I'm using. So this is called the beeswax resist. Um, so what you want to do is just rub the beeswax all over the board, like just in random spots, wherever you want. Um, the, the lighter color, I guess, for me, because I'm going to paint it with the darker color on top. So wherever you want the lighter color to show through. So you kind of have to remember where you apply the beeswax because you won't really see. But um, you won't really see it once you put the paint on top. But this kind of gives it just a really natural aged look. The nice thing about these wax packs is that it gives you more control over your distressing and it acts as a resist so that when you apply the top um, layer of paint, um, it will sand really easily and give it that natural aged look. You can see that I have some excess, I guess, where I rubbed it on. 
I don't know if I want too much in the middle of the board. I might do a couple of random spots. This way. Good. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm going to give my paints a stir again. You can see now it's like, yeah, you can see even better now the cream like consistency here. Um, just when you tip your cup, you can see how it pours. Okay, so I'm going to paint the dark artisanal on top of kitchen scale. And then these will have to, well this board and the next board will paint the top color on and then have to let it dry. And with these boards you want to let it dry really good so that you can see um, if you sand too soon, you'll see like the paint kind of still blending and stuff. So you don't want that. For board three, we're going to do a hemp resist. So it's similar to the beeswax, um, but we're just going to rub hemp oil on and random spots and then you will see the difference between the two techniques. We'll use um, just the lint-free lint -free cloth. So you can use that to apply the hemp oil as well. You don't have to use a brush. This one you'll see a lot more and you'll notice the separation of the paint when you apply the paint. I'm just trying to make it look like a little piece of wood I guess kind of a little bit. Yeah, so wherever you see that oil, um, the paint is going to resist those spots. This one I was going to paint with ironstone, so the white. So you don't let the oil dry, you'll just paint right on top of that. So I'll give my white a good stir. Yeah, you can see the consistency here. Again, scrape the bottom and the sides. This one sat for a long time. Okay, so now you can see how the paint is already starting to separate. So you don't want to work it in too much. Just let the paint do its thing. That's what you want it to do. So the more hemp oil you apply, the more resist you're going to get. Also, the more paint you apply, kind of the more it's going to resist it too. Then like if you do a thin layer, it won't resist it quite as much. Okay, so that board we can set aside and let it dry too. Okay, so for the next two boards, you're going to need a white wax and an antiquing wax. Um, and these will be used to finish your last two boards. So this is like the antiquing wax on this board. Um, darkens the color. The clear clear wax will keep it this like true color and then the white wax will lighten it. So I'm going to use antiquing wax on the kitchen scale. 
And you can apply this with a brush or with a lint-free cloth again. And these waxes that are with the kit are super soft and super durable. They're a museum grade finish, which is super nice and um, yeah, will help your piece um, last a long time. I like using the brush because I like the look that it can kind of give the piece. And I like kind of just making it random. Um, but you only apply what the surface needs. Um, most problems with wax happen when you apply too much. Um, so think of it as applying a lotion. And I also find when I rub too hard with the wax, it'll make kind of funny spots when you're removing the excess. So just kind of apply it fairly lightly. And Yeah, and if you're nervous about applying a, a dark wax or a white wax to a piece, you can always start um, on the back or the inside of a cupboard and just practice or practice on these boards lots. That helps too. And then you're going to take um, a lint-free cloth again and just wipe away the excess. And then you can buff it to shine if you want with these waxes um, or just kind of leave it as is. So sometimes when you apply antiquing wax or even with the white wax, you can do this too. I use the clear furniture wax um, just to help blend out um, some darker spots or if you want a more subtle look, um, it helps really blend it out. Sometimes I think it's too dark or you might get a blotchy spot kind of like that and then um, so it's nice to know that the clear wax kind of helps, kind of acts as an eraser, sort of like by blending it out a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes I like to apply a little bit of the clear wax first and then the antiquing wax too, but yeah, see how that kind of just smooths out that spot there. But yeah, and then the antiquing wax, like you can really push it into the grain a little bit. Um, it'll just bring out the detail of the wood, which is nice. So, so yeah, that's all you need to do to finish the piece. So that piece is finished as well. So now I'm gonna use the white wax on this board. Um, so I think I'm going to use the brush again here. So another good tip is, um, if you have the wax in bigger containers or whatever, um, is just to scoop out what you think you'll need and then, um, dip your brush in because there might be like little particles and stuff that go in and make your wax dirty and contaminated. But this is kind of the same thing again with the white wax. I always like to start around the edges. I don't know, maybe it's because my grandma taught me how to paint landscapes and she always started in the sky around the corners and it really made a difference for her paintings and my paintings, I think, too. But yeah, I really like the white wax on the trophy. Gives it a cool look. Um, another thing to remember is to always wax last. So if you want to apply hemp oil as a finish, you can. Um, but then, and then you can apply even the clear wax or any of the colored waxes on top. Um, but you can't go the other way around. You can't apply hemp oil on top of the wax. So just remember always wax last. And just yeah, blend it out. Yeah, 
Yeah, using a wax brush is my favorite way to apply the wax, but you can use the cloth as well. Also, if you were to stencil on any of these boards, then I would recommend um, stenciling something with the paint and then finishing last, because also if you're gonna um, paint on top of the wax, the paint will resist the wax. But yeah, and then just take a lint-free cloth again and wipe away the excess. But yeah, so and then it shouldn't shouldn't feel sticky or tacky. It should feel nice and smooth. Um, yeah, if it feels sticky or tacky, then you need to wipe away a little bit more. If you were to finish the trophy with the clear wax, then it would look like this. Um, and then the white wax or the antiquing wax. So totally different look depending on the wax that you use. So that board is finished as well. So we're gonna take your second board that we applied the beeswax distress on and we're gonna now that it's all dry we're gonna sand it um, so I'm using the 120 grit and I'm actually not sanding too hard yet because I just want to see I don't know it doesn't actually take much with the wax and I don't want to sand it all the way down to the wood So yeah, you can see it's super easy when you have the resist underneath to just keep that bottom color. It'll protect that base with the beeswax. Um, I think for the middle part, I'm going to use the, the 220 actually. Okay, so I think that's good now. So you just sand it as much or as little as you want to get um, the color showing through to distress it. So it's pretty dirty. <laughs> um, so you can even just wipe off like the excess powder from the paints. And before you go ahead and finish it. So then this one I'm going to finish with the clear wax, so the clear furniture wax, and I'm going to use a lint free cloth to apply it. Okay. And you'll see how the true color just comes to life. And I actually really like when it shows like three layers of paint. I think that's cool. So, but if you don't want that, just sand a little lighter on those spots. Yeah, these waxes are my favorites. They're just like putting icing on a cake and go on super nice and smooth and really easy to work with and then just swipe away any excess and then yeah I just love how with milk paints it just looks like it's just sitting in the piece um, kind of becomes part of it which is really cool so that piece is done now
Okay, so this board is all dry and ready to go. And I used um, the hair dryer on it with a little bit of heat so you can see that it crackled and you can see some chipping from the hemp oil. Um, the hemp oil resists. So um, yeah, it's cool. You can just kind of like scrape it off. And then if you like the crackle look on pieces, you can just go ahead and finish it. And the antiquing wax will actually um, really bring out like the crackle and make it look even more aged, if, especially like on a white or a lighter color. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna sand this though a bit to distress it. I'm not gonna keep as much of the crackle look. And yeah, you can see all the tips flaking off. Yeah, so when milk paint dries really fast, you'll get the chipping and crackling, even if you don't use a resist. So if you paint outside on a hot, sunny, windy day, then you might find that your piece dries really fast and then it'll this will, might happen to it. So if you don't want that to happen, then make sure you paint indoors or not on a hot day, super hot day. This board you can really sand as little or as much as you want to get the desired look. Okay, but once you're done, then you can just wipe off the excess. And then I'm going to apply the hemp oil finish on top. Um, I'm just going to use a cloth again, or you can use a brush. So yeah, that really brings all the details out. And some of the crackle you can really see too. And just wipe off the excess. Hemp oil is really good for yeah using as a resist or a finish. Um, it's also a food safe finish so you can use it um, on like cutting boards or butcher blocks or um, even on wooden floors or um, I also use it to freshen up like old um, dressers like in the drawers that smell funny or or just like kind of gross looking instead of painting it I'll just put the hemp oil on because um, that'll deepen and richen the color of the wood and just make it all fresh and nice. Yeah so that's all the five boards. Thanks for joining me today and hope you learned lots. Let me know if you have any questions about any of your projects.